I am not the best mac and cheese maker. It's time for my mac and cheese confession. My sauce, while flavorful, was grainy. I'm sorry. I got really discouraged after everything because, you know, I made this whole video and I, you know, was cooking with the kids and, and it looked so good and the flavors were great, but the sauce was grainy. The kids loved it. I go figure. I make this amazing dinner one night and the kids are like, this is weird. I don't like this part. And then I make grainy mac and cheese and they're eating it by the bowl full, loving it. They're eating the cauliflower. So I'm just like, whatever. The kids loved it. Andrew and I were kind of like, oh, it's grainy. Oh, it's just so frustrating. So, and, and the worst part about it, I was like, well, I have this for dinner tomorrow night too. I don't want to throw it out. That's so wasteful. I don't want to, you know, go to the store and get more things to, you know, it's just like, what do I do? How can I make this work? So I decided, I, I mean, I really thought long and hard about this. I was like thinking about it all morning. I'm like, do I go to the grocery store? Do I get more cheese? Do I try to make another cheese sauce? Do I try to make the whole thing over? Do I have to do a whole other video? But you know what? The whole point of this channel is just reality. And we're just going to learn from our, not mistakes, we're just going to learn from our experiences. So that's what happened. And I just got to thinking and I thought, okay, I'm not going to the grocery store. I'm not spending any more money on this. I already, you know, made this dish such a um, cost effective dish using leftovers and cheese that I already had and a lot of stuff in the pantry. And um, so I'm like, I'm just going with it. So I thought, you know what? I, I've done this kind of trick before and it worked so well. So I'm going to share with you what I did to kind of fix dinner for tonight. And we just ate it and it came out so good. Um, so here's what I did. I made a bechamel sauce, which is basically like the mac and cheese sauce before you add the cheese. You've got your roux, you're whisking in your milk. I made my roux a little bit on the thicker side because I wanted this sauce to be super thick. I didn't want to rely on the cheese to thicken the sauce. I needed, this is just going to be a milk sauce basically. So I needed to make it really thick and I needed to make it really flavorful since it doesn't have the flavor from the cheese or the um, thickness from the cheese. And then I um, whisked in some heavy cream and some low-fat milk to make that kind of like balance out more like a whole milk. I got a big clove of garlic and I just grated it into the roux. As the roux was cooking on low, I grated in my garlic and just the, I could smell it in the air that I'm like, this sauce is going to be packed with flavor. And it really was. I started whisking in the milk and I'm doing the milk really slowly. It was so thick, so thick and creamy. Um, I seasoned it really well with salt to taste. I was just tasting as I went along and it was absolutely delicious. Like you could pour this over pasta and you don't even need cheese. It's basically like an Alfredo sauce without the Parmesan cheese. So it was so delicious. So while I was making that bechamel sauce on the stove, I had scooped out most of the leftovers of my grainy mac and cheese. I put it into like a shallow baking dish and I popped it in the oven and I was just, I was just heating that up on 350 while I was making the bechamel. And what I was doing was I was kind of drying out the mac and cheese a little bit, really solidifying that sauce. So I kind of like made the sauce back into cheese. Then I took out the reheated grainy mac and cheese, which was no longer grainy. It was more like solidified. And I poured in that creamy bechamel and just stirred it all together. I just put it back in the oven on 350 for about 10 minutes just to blend everything together and make the bechamel really adhere to the previous mac and cheese sauce. And let me tell you that when I took it out, I could tell just by the look of it and then of course by the taste of it that it was a mac and cheese miracle. Okay, I really thought I failed, but today it was completely redeemed. I'm very thankful that I did not go back to the grocery store and try to buy, make another cheese sauce. I didn't try to make the whole thing over. I didn't throw anything out. I just used what I had. I used my, my, uh, my, um, just my brain, I guess. <laughs> so a few lessons learned. Number one, the reason that my mac and cheese sauce came out grainy could have been 
two things. So it was either one of these two things or it was a combination of both of these. The first one is I chose to use the, um, well, I didn't choose to use this. I just had this cheese already in my house and it ended up being kind of like two thirds sharp cheddar and one third that other um, French onion soup mix of cheese like Gruyere and Fontina and um, Swiss. And um, so I did have a majority of sharp cheddar, which you can make mac and cheese with sharp cheddar only. You just have to be really careful because it's an aged cheese. So um, it, it's very uh, unforgiving when you add it to the cream sauce. So next time when I make this, when I make a big pot of mac and cheese, I'm gonna definitely still use sharp cheddar, but I am going to balance it out, probably half sharp cheddar and half all those other good cheeses. And also something that I really need to get better about is letting my bechamel uh, cool slightly. After bringing it to a simmer and watching it thicken, you don't wanna just start putting the cheese in because the cheese can't really stand that high heat. It's gonna freak out, freeze up, and it's gonna separate and you're just gonna have some grainy texture. And I can say all of this with so much wisdom now because I've made this mistake more times than just last night. Um, but I'm, I'm really learning this time. The next time it will be better. Um, so um, next time I will just kind of take my bechamel off the heat. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute or two. And I'm gonna add my cheeses really slowly. And I am 99.9% .9 sure that next time when I make this mac and cheese, it's going to be perfect. I wouldn't change anything about the flavors, the um, garlic and the mustard that I used, and then, oh, the topping with the croutons and the salami were just so good. Um, so I, I, I'm really happy overall with this experience. And, um, you know, we, we learn from our mistakes and we, we move on. So I hope that you don't hate me for um, making a mac and cheese fail. Um, maybe, maybe you've done the same thing and we can just kind of cry about it together and, and move on with our lives. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.